welcome tonight. God bless you all in a special way. Amen. All of you uh, logged on tonight. We certainly appreciate you coming. Amen. And as we want to enter in his presence tonight uh, to seek his faith and to hear from the Lord. Amen. Let's just bow as we want to start with a prayer. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you tonight for your blessings, Lord. Lord, things that we see, Lord, and things that we don't see, Father. Lord, we thank you for all of it, Lord, Father, for it is for your honor and for your glory. It testifies of your hand, Lord, in our lives, Father, intervening, Lord, blessing us, O oh God, Father, Lord, preparing us for the journey, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us this far. Lord, there's a lot to praise you for tonight. We thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives, Lord. Lord, when we look back down the long road, Father, we could see that it was Jesus helping us all the way through. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your presence is still with us. Lord, you promise to never leave us and never forsake us, Lord. Always to be with us, Lord. Even to the end of the earth, you promise to be there with us tonight. And Father, we know you're here tonight. Here with each one, O oh God, Father, in their private spaces, Lord, or wherever you presence might find him tonight. We pray that your Holy Spirit will now surround him with your glory, Lord, and as we sing songs of praise unto your name, and as we enter into the presence of God tonight, we pray that you would sweep over our souls, Lord. We pray that you bless, Lord, the, what to be prepared, Father, the word to be prepared to speak to our hearts, Lord, that you have upon your servant tonight. Pray that you bless it and use it, Lord, Father, to, Lord, be an edification to us, Lord, that we could key in, Lord, and channel in, O oh God, Father, and to pray and to seek you, Lord, like never before, for your promises, Lord, Father, that you have laid them for us, Lord. Now we pray you bless this time and pray. Lord, we pray you have your perfect way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, why don't you praise him tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Just give him praise wherever you are tonight. Just give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. I have a
praise tonight, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, I have a longing. I have a Say, Father, I'm longing for you tonight. Oh, I'm a thirsting for you tonight, Lord. Come by here, Lord Jesus, tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Inhabit our praise, Lord. Inhabit our praise. Inhabit our praise, Lord. Inhabit our praise, and I lift my hands to you to worship and adore you. Inhabit our praise, Lord. Inhabit our praise. Oh, inhabit our praise, Lord. Inhabit our praise. Inhabit our praise, Lord. I lift my hands to you, worship and adore you, and have it all praise, Lord, and have it all praise, and have it all praise, Lord, and have it all praise. Praise. Oh, give me praise tonight, hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Father. Oh, give me a high clap of praise, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. I'm on my way to Canaan's land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way. Praise God, I'm on my way. If you won't go, don't hinder me. Oh, if you won't go, don't hinder me. If you don't go, don't hinder me. Oh no, I'm on my way. Praise God, I'm on my way. Oh, I'm on my way. Nowhere to Canaan land. Oh, I'm on my way. Oh, to Canaan land. Well, I'm on my way. Oh, Canaan land. I'm on my way, praise God, I'm on my way, oh, glory, glory, oh, well, hallelujah, since I lay, oh, I'm burning now, oh, well, now, glory, glory, oh, well, hallelujah, since I lay, my burning now, oh, well, so much better since I lay Oh, and my burden now Oh, feeling better So much better since I lay My burden now Give him a shout of praise, hallelujah Oh, glory, glory Give him praise, hallelujah Lift your hands Oh, give him a shout, hallelujah Thank you, Jesus Glory to God, hallelujah Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Since I lay, I'm burning down. One more time. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay, oh, my burning down. Glory, glory. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise right now. Just give him glory. Give him honor. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall upon the Lord and have waited on God, many of the decisions we have made, many of the actions we have taken, we would not have done it because he would have bring direction, guidance, confirmation. He would have, you would have seen his hand more in your life. A lot of things is because we haven't waited, because we are free to choose and decide and act. And God gave us that liberty. And based upon that liberty, we reap the fruit of our decisions. We reap the fruit of our thoughts. We reap the fruit of our words. And as we get nearer to the headstone, as we get nearer to this capping of the pyramid, we need to wait upon the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we... John wrote and said, I write unto you children. I write unto you young men. I write unto you father. It's a process. It's a growth from baby to child, young men to fathers. You want us to come into maturity. You want us to come in fatherhood. You want us to come that we could catch your mind. For the prophet, he was the eyes, Lord. He says, there's no moving faculty past the eyes. The next, next is intelligence. And I pray tonight your intelligence will come down and speak to us and minister to us an entrance into this spirit of prayer and supplication and asking and seeking after you. We thank you for all what you're doing, all what you have done. Bless what we will read and share tonight. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. I was certainly blessed on Wednesday night uh, by what Brother Gideon shared about uh, after the training is completed. There are some people not going for training at all. So they're not even reaching that completion part because training has to do with discipline. It's a discipline to attend this virtual prayer meeting tonight. You could do other things, but this is what discipline is about. The systematic, rhythmic, consistent behavior that is required of you is a discipline. So we want to go into the word tonight, and I want to just take two portions of scripture, one from Luke 16, 16, a scripture that we know, and also from Jeremiah 29, verse 10 to 13. Just want to get. And um, the thought I have for tonight is why not get down to business? Why not get down to business? Luke 16, 16 says, the law and the prophets went to John. And since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into it. 
not just simply walk into it easily, Abraham says, but it's, it's got to be pressed into. See, when you seek me with all your heart, and I'll be found. Jeremiah 29, verse 10 says, For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And listen to verse 12. Then, this is God speaking now, then shall you call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me. This is God's expectation. This is God's desire. You shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Father, may I bless your word in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again for being here tonight. Wow. I have something written here. Grumblers. Are you a grumbler? A whiner? A complainer? A fault finer? Do you mumble and grumble? of people who have mumble and grumble. And to mumble, they say something indistinct and quietly, making it difficult for others to hear. So people know you're not happy and you're mumbling words. They know what you already say, but you're mumbling, you're saying stuff. But I want to share some of you tonight. Faith does not mumble. Faith speaks. Faith looks for a way. Faith sees what is possible. Faith is never negative. Faith is always positive. And people claim to have faith. All their claims is to have revelation. And by their behavior and attitude, you could see they're short of what they are claiming. Faith is revelation. When it's revealed to you, it causes you to look for a way. It causes you to see what is possible. It causes you to be positive. That's what faith does. In scripture read in 1 Corinthians 10, we read. And you can turn it if you want to, just, or just listen. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you would be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, were all baptized into the Moses in the cloud and the sea. So always in the message, all that books, all that tapes, all that pastors and all the nice churches and beacons and stuff, right? They all eat the same spiritual meat, all drink the same spiritual drink, and they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. And the wilderness is not a destination. The wilderness is an environment of test. The wilderness is on the way too the promised land. Verse 6, and these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted, neither be idolaters as some of them were. Some of them, as is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and would destroy the serpents. Neither murmur ye, as the murmurers, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Listen to this part. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand there take heed, lesson four. Here we go, verse 13. This is what I want to get to. They had no temptation taken you, but what is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are evil, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. So we complain about the temptation or the test or the enticement to sin, but you're not looking at with every enticement to sin, every test, every temptation, God makes a way of escape. Let's look at this scripture in verse 
1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the Amplified. And I think it, it, it really uh, expands it. Okay, let's go 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticement, enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance, that is beyond human resistance, and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience, and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not, here we go, not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always, always, watch that word always, he will always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. Like we say, he may not take away the storm, but he gives you peace. He may not take away the affliction, but he gives you grace. Okay, let's go quickly now. You can't purpose anything of God's promise in your heart without finding the reality to it. Listen to how these words are placed. You can't purpose, not hearing and understanding and knowledge, information, but we're talking about purpose now. Anything of God's promise in your heart without finding the reality of it. If your soul has been tormented by sins and doubts, ups and downs and frustrations, and there is something down in you that is telling you that there is somewhere you can overcome that, why do you float around from church to church, from place to place? Just kneel down till you strike heaven. As I said last night, go beyond the sound barriers. Then you'll have a purpose in life. You will have a purpose in belonging to the church. You'll have a purpose in being baptized. You'll have a purpose in what you are seeking for. Because we know that God is honest, God is true, and God cannot lie. If you need any need, whatsoever that God has promised in his Bible, he's here tonight to meet that need. No need of seeking further. His presence is here. His spirit is here. And he is willing. Here we go. He is willing and ready and longing to give to you what you are seeking for. Why would you wait any longer? Now, here is part. When you come to him, don't come as a fluter. I'll go up and try and see if it works. You will never get nowhere. When you come with this kind of a determination that you have sold out, lock, stock, and bar, when you are tired of the world and sin and unbelief and frustration and doubts and come to the living God with an anchor, surely tightening the rock of ages, the Holy Spirit is here to pull you into the presence of the living God and that will give you a faith that you overcome anything else in the world, sickness, disease, and even that itself. You see when he said, when you come with that kind of determination, what does the Bible say faith is? Faith is the substance of things who are for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise that. He that cometh to God, cometh to God like we are doing tonight, must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently or passionately or enthusiastically or persistently or with a determination seek it after him you shall find me scripture read when you seek me with all of your heart now watch he says you said you said death brother Branham that's what I meant death was it not Lazarus who would lay in dead I know you heard this before but I want to say it again tonight I felt led to do this tonight was it not Lazarus who was laying dead in the ground and already corruption set? When Jesus said to Martha, where have you buried him? If you won't doubt, you shall see the glory of God. Did not I tell you not to doubt? He said to Jairus that night or that day, if you only believe, you can see the glory of God. 
then faith overcomes death. Faith is the victory overcomes death. Faith is the victory over sin. Faith is the victory over sickness. Faith is the victory over worry. Faith is the victory over frustrations. Faith is the victory over the world. You say, John, when he wrote that, he didn't have my troubles. He didn't have to deal with the folk that I deal with. He didn't have to go through the things that I do. And like Brother Gideon said, he said when we see uh, 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 Brother, Brother Knights, when he passed his exam to get his license, when I told him, go and learn to drive. You only get the pass, the authority to be on the road. But the training doesn't teach you in the, the driving at night. It doesn't teach you when it's raining. But you have the tools. I want to share with you tonight. God puts something in you to resist sin, to resist temptation. God put tools in you. You have the tools. And we want to show you by the word tonight what God is expecting of you that you could ride over it. Here we said now. He may not have had to deal with the same folk, Dr. John. He may not have had to overcome the same thing, but he never excluded him. For he said, the faith is the victory that overcomes the world, the whole thing. How is it? Get faith right above it. When we have the written word of God laying before us, and the Holy Spirit here performing and showing the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with divine promises written here, whatever desire when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. What do you do then? Have faith, not just floating faith. There's a new one. So it has something called floating faith. Not just make believe faith, but a real faith. And we read this thing last Sunday. Faith is a conqueror. Faith is an overcomer. It isn't a peacemaker. It overcomes. Faith is a victory that overcomes the world. What does it do? What is faith? It's a conqueror. Conquer and victory is the same. To conquer means to beat down, to override, to handcuff, to turn to prison. It means that the sin that once ruled you, you rule it now. It means that you have overcome. You whipped it. You are greater than it. And faith is the victory that overcomes every curse of the devil. Faith is the victory. Faith is what? Faith in what? Not faith in your church. Not faith in your creed. Not faith in some man. But faith in Jesus Christ who made the promise. That's the victory. What is it? My arm is still crippled, but faith is the victory. I still feel sick, but faith is the victory. It overcomes the world. When you can climb into God, and I'm saying that, I'm believing that tonight, by prayer, until you see the thing conquered under you, there's nothing that can hurt you then. You have overcome. you got 50 miles of elbow room. You are saved in freedom. How many want to get some elbow room tonight? Freedom from devils, from frustration, from all kinds of contrary influences. Just an elbow room that you can move up closer to God. Okay. And this is the part I want to get to tonight to wrap up this whole thing. Where I get this thought from, why not get down to business? But Bram speaks. A little woman that's sitting present now. So he was talking about somebody that was right there in the service. She has been at this altar time after time after time. A good woman, but she started smoking a long time ago. She just couldn't overcome it. But she had come up, and I would pray with her, and seem like she just couldn't overcome it. And the first thing you know, I told her, I said, there'll be danger down the road. He didn't throw out the church. He didn't blast her. She just tell her there's danger down the road. She said, but Abraham, I have cried. I have begged. You see, just emotional fighting the air, that won't do any good. I hope you're following this with me tonight. I hope that you're connecting it to your own experience and to what you yourself go through. And I get down and pray with her. This is Brother Branham. This is not an evangelist. This is not some teacher. This is a prophet. I get down and pray with her. What a testimony. Eh? Brother Branham prayed with me. And lay hands on her. And she'll go back. And a few days, I meet her again. And just knock you down with cigarette smoke. And still brown. And one night, down yonder, 
she went to the doctor, begin to get sick, wither away, till just a little timely thing. And the doctor looked into her, she, she said, cancer, smoking cigarettes. There she was, laying there to die. Then she got down to business. See, a drunken man will reach for a straw. As long as you can walk out of this church tonight, know you can go and join the Methodist or Baptist. As long as you can sit in here, and there are people that have become so arrogant in this message. You can't tell them anything. They won't tell me anything. You can walk from one group to the next group. They could, there had to be no group at all because there are books, there are tapes. And just a lot of pompous, arrogant. They don't even have the attitude of being a forgiven sinner talking to other sinners. But let's continue. As long as you walk out the church tonight, know you can join the Methodist or Baptist. As long as you can sit in here and say, I'm a good person. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, you can't do nothing with you. Yeah, you can't do nothing with you. That's right. Yeah, this one. But when you see your sins as God sees them in the light of his Bible, when you see, then you repent or perish, something will take place. You'll get down to business. So she walk out there, smoke, smoke, smudging around your heart. The doctor back there will maybe raise up and say, it's a heart attack. You'll get down to business. That's when she had to get to business. And the woman is sitting looking at me now. But Robinson is back there. Mr. Wood, but a wood sitting there somewhere. And I believe they're in a the truck and the Holy Spirit seemed to move us to go way up. And there she was. And when I got there, she had a dream. And when the Holy Spirit came into the room, she got down to real business. Here we go. She never smoked a cigarette from then on. She had gained many pounds of weight and they can't find a trace of cancer. What is it? It is fate that overcome. Why didn't it overcome when I was praying for her? Question. He prayed, he laid hands, he encouraged her. She came to the altar. She's a regular altar call person, always up there. Why didn't I it overcome when I was praying for her? Here, she was just fluttering around. But when the doctor said, you got cancer, you're going to die, she got to business. And that's the way it has to, to get. When you get to business, why wait that long? Why not get down to business now? I'm using that. Why not get down to business tonight? Put your feet in God. Oh, here this bum here. What if the woman had feet, had her feet in me? It will feel because I'm a man. And watch this now. This is so good. The prophet prayed for her, he laid hands upon her. And what if her confidence was in him? He laid hands upon me, and laid hands upon me, and who laid hands upon her, who touched her with that? He says, watch. What if the woman had a faith in me? It will fail because I'm a man. But when she changed her faith, not in the Branham Tabernacle, or in William Branham, or in someone else, but placed her faith in Jesus Christ, then she got faith. She raised up over her fears, doubts, and God healed her. Faith is the victory. And I'll close with this. You were speaking about the woman that had the dead baby in Mexico, and she didn't want to bury her baby. She held on to the baby because she saw that somebody else was here and different things like that. And she was talking about she would run right under the top of the shoulders, fall right down among them. She would gain a few feet, then try to put her back out. She would come right between their legs, holding this baby, upsetting ushers and everything else. Didn't make any difference. She was getting up there. She had to get there. It, it didn't make any difference. She was going to get there. Now, when the same desperation rises, it will throw love and faith up there in the battlefront to claim what you want because it's a promise of God that you can have it. I turned to the minister or the evangelist at the place. I turned. I felt sorry for the woman. But there was no desperation. I turned and thought, well, but a jack will pray for her. That settled it. As I was speaking now, I looked there and there was a vision. So all of a sudden, a vision broke in. I seen a little baby sitting there, a little black-faced Mexican baby with no teeth. It was laughing at me sitting out there. 
I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now hear the point here now. Her desperation drove the Holy Spirit to change my subject, change my eyes, and show me her baby sitting there. That sent the spirit back. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bring me the baby. Here she come with a little wet soaking blue and white blanket, a little dead form about her that long. She fell with a crucifix in her hand or a rosary and say, Haley Mary, I said, put that, it, put it up. That's not necessary. And she come up close to where I was. She screamed, Padre, which means father. I said, don't say that. Don't say that. Do you believe? He said it in Spanish to her. She said, yes, she believed. He asked her how she would believe. She said, if God can give that old man his sight, he can give my baby the life. Desperation drove her to it. Not a thing in my path. I just saw the vision. I said, Lord Jesus, I saw a vision of his little baby. It might be this one. And that time he kicked his feet and they were raised from the dead. Desperation. When thou seekest me with all thine heart, then I will hear you. See, the kingdom, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of heaven is preached and man present to it. You don't just stand around and say, pick me up by the color, Lord. Push me in. You tonight. That's what happened after. You are hearing me tonight. You are online tonight. You press into it. You get desperate between life and death. Just one more story and we close. He says, I was thinking right now of a woman, a girl took a wrong road and how she had turned new pages and things and said, I said, sister, she got up and said, I believe I'll be all right. I said, no, stay there. And then the first thing you know, she started praying a little bit. And directly, she got louder and louder. And after a while, she got desperate. She said, oh, God, save me. Alcoholic, I'm not sending money on a mask, couldn't cure it. Nothing else could do it. But then big black eyes look at me, tears dropping off her cheeks and said, something happened. Oh, yeah, something happened. She got desperate. Let's be desperate about this between death and life. If you can't get desperate, don't come through here. If you're desperate, come here and watch. You will get it just as soon as you get here. Let us bow our heads tonight. Heavenly Father, I shared what I believe you put upon my heart to share with your people. That Let's get down to business. God may it be seen tonight is not a game. It's not playing cards or playing lucky seven. It's the approach, is what you require of us. The kingdom is preached and every man press. God, you call us to press. May they press tonight as they pray. May they press tonight with faith, believing that you'll come and confirm your word to their heart. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. And amen. God bless you. As we gather and pray tonight, may the Holy Spirit be with you. And may God honor your faith tonight. Find out and speak unto him. God bless you. Praise the Lord.
Jesus. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that we could focus tonight, not on, Lord, Isaac being killed, or the, or the knife coming down, but there's a ram in the ticket. You always have a provision, Father. In every situation, there's a provision, Father. Our eyes not to focus on the lion, in the lion's den, but Lord, to focus on the fire and the presence that will shut them out the lion. Our eyes not to focus on the fire and the fire and the fire, but to know that there will be a fourth man in the fire. Lord, keep our eyes not to focus on Goliath, but the God that delivers from the bear and the lion is able to deliver from this Goliath. Father, keep our eyes shift. Just a little shift tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, it's a shift. And that's why I'm the Peter father. He was walking on the water. And there's a little shift. Just taking his eyes off of Jesus and looking at the water. Oh God, everything changed right there. Begin to sink. Oh God, help us tonight. There's a little shift tonight to take our focus and place it on the Lord. To really have confidence that you're not a man of a lie. Have confidence that you'll fulfill your word. You confirm your word. Oh God, send a revival, Father. Oh God, you said revelation brings prevailing power, Father. And the people don't know how much they need revelation, Father. Real revelation, divine revelation. Revelation that comes from heaven. Revelation that comes from above. Not just hearing the word, but the revealing of the word. And no man can reveal the word to the people. It takes the Holy Spirit to do that. People can sit down and hear the word, but it takes the operation of the Holy Ghost to reveal the word. Father, I pray tonight that divine revelation will begin to strike the people. Revelation after revelation after revelation. Baptism after baptism after baptism. Power after power after power. Oh God, have your way, Father. In the name of Jesus, I ask it, Lord. Send on your anointing, Lord. Break every yoke, Lord Jesus. Break every fetter tonight, Father. We are yours, Lord. We are waiting on you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father, tonight. Oh, God, send down the true baptism of the Holy Ghost. Send down the true anointing of God. Send down the fire of God to burn into our hearts, Lord, to burn into our souls, Lord. The prophet saw my vision, a bride gets an outer step, and she said, get back in step. And any person inside this room here tonight, that outer step, may they get back in step, get back in position, Lord. You said you will find you when we seek you with our whole hearts. Oh God, may we genuinely seek you with our whole hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray you pour your spirit, Lord. May you pour your spirit upon Sunday service, Father. May you pour your spirit upon your people. The Holy Spirit is poured upon individuals, Lord. May it be a refreshing and anointing, a point out, a quickening, a weakening, and prepare our hearts for this great revival as God to break upon the earth, Lord. May it start here. May it start now. May it start in this time of prayer. May it start in the homes and the lives of the people. You said that minister cannot bring a revival. It'll take the people to bring it, Father, in their homes and their lives. Father God, maybe how do we not know for such a time as this, you have set this up, that right in our home, a revival can begin to break out, Lord, and your presence and power can take a hold upon your people in a special way. Have your way tonight, Lord. May your great grace be upon them. In Jesus' name I ask it. Remember the officers, remember the elders, remember the trustees, remember all the helps, remember all the give the support in the church, Lord. And Lord, may they come with that energy, that energy of God, that power of God. Touch the Caleb's, Lord. Touch our young people, Father. Restore them and revive them. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. Thanks again for being here. And I pray, God, as you come under great expectation to see what the Lord will do this coming Sunday. God be with you. God bless you.